54310. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon, uh, Paris. Um, I'd like to introduce myself, Hans Peter Schmidt from WS uh, Reformer. I'm going to talk today about the extraction of hydrogen from green and ammonia. And I would like to introduce uh, our technology and our products and give a little bit an, an overview and a background uh, what's behind uh, Ammonia. Some of them have already been there at our booth uh, for um, discussions, preliminary discussions. Thank you for your interest and maybe all of you are interested to come over. This is around there uh, some steps away. Um, so, why I'm here, uh, what is my motivation? Uh, in fact, I'd like to answer to you or answer um, some questions which occur in most of the studies I, I've read. If you're dealing with ammonia, it seems to be quite new, and there are many, many studies at the moment from a theoretical point of view, if ammonia is a good hydrogen carrier or how is it compared to other options like uh, liquid, uh, liquid hydrogen or uh, liquid organic carriers. Sometimes methanol is also taken into account. Uh, and you don't have to focus, we don't want to emphasize on all of the details here, uh, but the discussion uh, is, or the, the summary of most of those uh, studies end up with new questions or with open questions. So there's simply reason for this, because if you uh, make a study, you get some money and you want to make next study, so you have to keep open um, some new, uh, some questions. And most of them end, end up today with the statement, the ammonia cracking process it is, at, is at a very early stage of technology uh, development. It has high energy needs and requires additional purification steps to make hydrogen usable. In fact, uh, this is true. And I'd like to give some answers on those questions regarding the efficiency, regarding the energy it needs. Um, and maybe I'm talking a, a little about type of purification um, and give some ideas, not on, in a qualitative way, but in more in a quantitative way, what it does it mean it needs high energy um, to, con to extract the hydrogen out from the ammonia. Short background about uh, us, about our company. We are a mid-sized company based in the southern part of Germany, I would say in the automotive technology region around Stuttgart, uh, which is in the southwest of uh, Germany. And by the way, it's closer to Paris from Stuttgart than to Berlin. Uh, that was I, rec I recognized yesterday when I came by train. Uh, we are a mid-sized company, privately owned, with, um, with the shareholders working in the companies. Uh, and the group consists of a number of companies here. And the money is made by WS Wärme Prozess Technik. And they are selling industrial burners based on flux uh, technology. This is a special combustion technology which has been invented, invented uh, and developed in our company. In total, we have got about 160 people and an, av an average revenue around 40, 30 to 40 million per year. WS Reformer uses those kind of burners in, in our um, steam reformer technology, technology uh, and I've been in the field since 20 years. The company has been was has been founded. It was founded in 2003, so we have our 20 years anniversary. So some people called me call me a dinosaurier in this area, uh, but the dinosaurs uh, which survived all the ups and downs over uh, the years. Uh, our sister company Eflox, um, they're building those kind of containers, uh, complete small scale plants. They are engaged in France mainly in the field of biogas, off gas uh, um, usage. And most lately, most recently, we founded a German company, BTX. 
and they are doing business development. That means you see in this, in this field from basic technology down to the close to market project development, we have the value chain in the, our hands, but, and that's important to say, nothing is exclusive here. So we, could, we can sell every, to everybody reformers, we could sell everybody's plants, uh, and BTX uh, is trying to establish as a project developer or an engineering um, planning partner. So no, no exclusivity here, so we are absolutely free for, to everybody. So to step into the ammonia topic, I would like to start with the perspective of a project developer. Say, a, a municipality or somebody who likes to operate fuel cell buses, uh, because I find it cool, they, um, they, they have the option to use, let's say, 20, 15 to 20 buses in their, in their community. And they say, it, okay, this is a way for to or one step to decarbonization. And the question then occurs, how do, how do we get the hydrogen for the buses? And one option is ammonia. Ammonia is a commodity which is used in the fertilizer industry. It's a liquid at, let's say, ten, about 10 bar. You can purchase, order those kind of vessels with up to 15 ton uh, liquid hydrogen containerized um, units. Um, then if you come to the fueling station, HRS means hydrogen um, refueling stations, just go around here, you'll find at least, I would say, 10 companies who are willing and who are able to deliver hydrogen, complete hydrogen refueling station uh, equipment. That includes compressor, that includes storage, and so on, and, and the, the dispenser itself. So that's not our, bo in our job here, but we know what, what the interface should be. And we're talking about the rec reconversion unit from the liquid ammonia um, to the hydrogen fuel refueling station interface. Well, here as an example, um, one of our products is able to consume, to use 120 per kilogram um, ammonia, uh, which produces then enough hydrogen uh, for those fleet of buses. It means 350 kilograms per day. If you do the calculation, then you see the, the NH3 container on the left-hand side uh, should be must be exchanged uh, once a week compared to the supply of hydrogen. You know one truck has got about 400 kilogram hydrogen. You would need every day, every other day, a truck of hydrogen. Here you would need uh, one truck of uh, ammonia per week. Um, so the, the thermal, uh, thermal efficiency of the, con uh, of the total conversion is around, it's uh, the mistake here, uh, around between 70 and, and 80 percent. Uh, not too bad. Uh, and what is interesting, uh, so this type of fuel supply, I would say, is very comparable to what you already know from, from mineral oil. So you get a liquid energy carrier, produce the hydrogen, at the point of use, and then you're able to fuel your buses. One step back, what is behind the technology, in order to give you a first impression, uh, that comes from our steam reformers, small-scale steam reformers, and in fact, the steam reformer, or the cracker, consists of a furnace, this is the blue box here, and in the furnace, there's a number of reactors, they are operated at elevated pressure, and the reactors are heated by central, or a number of reactors are heated by um, flux burners, uh, and, with, um, and the flux burners, they produce, um, they supply the heat for evaporation, for heating up, 
the ammonia and for the for the cracking uh, itself, and uh, they are operated with gas. Gas means, in this case, any kind of mixture of hydrogen and ammonia, or with uh, with off gases from purification technologies. So this is important to say. This is a gas heated uh, ammonia cracker, which can be is heated by its own product. So. How do they look like? On the left-hand side, you see a picture of a small demonstrator. Um, capacity is slow. Is, is uh, low. Let's say 12 to 15 kilograms per hour uh, ammonia uh, input uh, supplies about two to three kilograms per hour hydrogen, which is good for any demonstration and proof of feasibility. Um, scale one is then close to, I would say, commercial application. Uh, that's what I meant. 350 kilogram per day hydrogen production. Uh, the unit size here is about in footprint. Well, it fits. It fits this this carpet floor here where I'm standing on, and the height, and that is important, is around 2.2.2.5 2. 2. meters. That means it fits in a container, and it fits to to any kind of street uh, transport of the machine. So, but this is only one, one component in the whole chain. Uh, as mentioned before, the, the, the crackers from, hydrogen, from, from uh, ammonia cracking consist of about 75% about hydrogen, 25% nitrogen, and some traces in the range of 100 ppm um, uh, NH3, which is, which we can't avoid because from thermodynamics we, ha we get uh, this amount of NH3. So we need for pure hydrogen or let's say for fuel cell grid hydrogen, we need to extract the uh, nitrogen and we need to extract uh, the ammonia. And there are several uh, purification technologies available. Most of them operated pressure driven. And most of or all of them have a kind of off gas, and it's important to say that the off gas can be used in the burner to supply the heat for the cracking process. If you don't like this, but usually you need to 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 use the off gases, but you can also use some of the crack gas from the um, raw gas from the cracker. Uh, important to say, uh, the um, ammonia is supplied liquid in a liquid form. We do the evaporation inside of the, the blue box. So efficiency, uh, if we, I will do a calculation here with some um, assumption or assumptions for the hydrogen recovery in the purification system, we end up, depending on the size, demonstrator scale, uh, scale one we have already seen, between 70 and let's say 75, up to 80% in maximum for the really larger units. And this shows this is, shows that the efficiency of those small-scale units are not far away from really big refinery-type uh, things. So in order to give a more an outlook, uh, if we want to use it for a larger scale, um, here for one customer, we did a study um, to produce hydrogen from um, ammonia for a fuel cell with 2.5 megawatt electric power. In this case, we need about 100 kilogram per hour hydrogen. And how would we re realize this? Um, so the idea is then to put um, a number of those modules, one module I would say is four reactors, the blue one, the blue circles are react the reactors from the top with, a, with, one, with one burner. We, we take a number of them, put them in a furnace box with a typical size here, uh, and then multiply uh, the units. And those units, so the single units, they are still, um, they can be still uh, transported uh, on the on the road, which is uh, important for these applications. 
Well, so this is, let's say, a midterm uh, option here. Uh, as you can see, uh, the, the, the cost or the pricing is more or less linear in this case because it's a multiplication of the, of the single components, but that means if one, com one single component works, then uh, a number of 10 or 20 of them works as well. So proven technology um, is simply uh, multiplied here. And with our flux burners, we are able to, to burn to combust the combust the gases even uh, with traces and amounts of, uh, of ammonia at low NOx uh, emissions. So this is the, well, the, the outlook. And from our point of view, uh, we think ammonia is an interesting, very interesting carbon-free hydrogen carrier. Uh, the synthesis of ammonia with green hydrogen is well known. It's clear how to do this. Um, and in fact, there is no carbon uh, needed. Uh, in terms of conversion or extracting hydrogen, and according to our 20 years experience of steam reforming of methane, steam reforming of biogas, reforming of um, methanol, reforming of ethanol, um, extracting hydrogen from, from ammonia is really the simplest thing. Um, the efficiency is quite high. Cra cracker efficiency, we do a lot of rec heat recuperation there inside, is above 80%. And the, si the system efficiency, including the purification, until the interface to the hydrogen refueling stations will be uh, around, let's say, between 70 and 80 percent, which is not uh, too bad, or uh, I think it's the best practice from any liquid, if, if you take the hydrogen from any liquid uh, carrier. So regarding purification, this I only mentioned, but I didn't talk about what is the, the option here. So I have a favorite. Uh, out of these three options. So there's the option to selectively um, oxidize the ammonia. Anyway, you need to, um, or in, for fueling station, you need to extract the hydrogen as, uh, the nitrogen as well. And this is not the case for fuel cells. Um, but if we need pure hydrogen, fuel cell good hydrogen, then absorption, let's say PSA systems, or uh, gas separation membranes are the way to go. I have a, fa I have a favorite, but uh, this needs to be tested. So this needs to be tested, uh, and I have also a relatively clear picture which solution is the, be the best co or the best for from the commercial point of view. So in an order to well to bring this. Um, to public or to the market, uh, we are currently working on on establishing and creating um, demonstration projects. Uh, and demonstration project means here really producing hydrogen in a significant amount uh, at at the right uh, purity. So everybody who is interested in is highly welcome and invited uh, to join us. Uh, from a conceptual point of view, in discussions, or even if there is a project at the horizon from your point of from your side. So I didn't recognize the your hand, your five minute hand. Uh, so there's some time for discussion and questions, I guess. Thank you for your kind attendance. If there's a question, then you get a micro, don't don't you? How this does this work? Everybody fed up, but no no one fell asleep, uh, as far as I recognized. So there's one question. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you think, sorry. 
I love it. <laughs> Just to uh, have uh, your vision about uh, what is the time we need to, to deploy it uh, really uh, as, as a common way today, with respect uh, to the, what you have presented today, our, our, our preliminary pilot uh, initiatives, but uh, what is your feeling about uh, Nine months. the democratic one? Nine months. Nine months? Really? Th that, is, that is the shortest time we are, uh, we are able to deliver. But let's say, um, along with the engineering partners to, to, to really deploy a complete project, it will take much longer. But our delivery time is at the moment is nine months. Thank you. So that, that shows you we sell and you get an offer within one week, I promise. Yes, what are the restrictions for uh, the storage of uh, ammonia in, uh, if you want, you have a fueling station in urban uh, situation? That's what I not yet know, honestly. But I can imagine that it might be an issue to place a fueling station at Port Versailles, <laughs> at the entrance of Port Versailles with, uh, with ammonia. Yeah. I could imagine it. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Everybody, enjoy the fair, enjoy the, the afternoon. You're welcome to, to come over. <laughs>